I know not why God's wondrous grace to me has been made known, nor why unworthy as I am he claimed before his own. But I know as we gather to worship God together. I hope you enjoyed that version of I Know Whom I Have Believed. It was sung for us by some singers from Dronfield Baptist Church just to the south of Sheffield. And so we come to the one in whom we have believed. More than that, the one who has taken us and called us his own. The one whom we can trust beyond anyone else our God. Let's come to him with our opening prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, there's so much we don't understand about you, and perhaps your love and grace for us, which you give us without us deserving them, are the hardest things to understand. Yet through them you've called us forgiven us, made us your own, and sent us to share this love and grace with the people around us. So help us today, not so much to understand these, as to know them deep within us, and to grow and live in them, so that others might see them in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue to thank God for being the one whom we can trust to guide us through every danger and every storm and bring us safely home to him. Let's sing My Lighthouse. In my 
wrestling in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. to God with our own prayers the time when you can bring the prayers on your hearts whether they're prayers related to what I suggest or your own prayers that you particularly need to say in this time let us pray together when have been the times when God has kept you safe when he has protected you thank him for those times what are the things that are helping you to trust in God right now.
What are the things that are making it harder for you to trust in God right now? What do you need to confess to God just now? And what do you need to trust God with just now? We draw all our prayers together. We draw all our prayers together as we share in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> to you again
Our first reading is the first part of the story of Abraham. And we read from Genesis chapter 12, starting at verse 1. The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram travelled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he went on towards the hills east of Bethel, and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord, and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out, and continued towards the Negev. The next reading comes from John 1, verses 1 to 14, and is read by Barry. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of the man, but of God. And the word came, became flesh and lived amongst us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thank you, Barry, for that reading. And may God bless to us the reading of his word today. Are you a risk taker? Are you someone who likes a challenge, who loves something new and potentially dangerous? You know, a bit of bungee jumping, a bit of rock climbing or abseiling, something like that? Is that you? Are you a risk taker? I have to say that I am not particularly a risk taker at all. I don't like heights. The thought of climbing up a rock face frightens the living daylights out of me. You're abseiling. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, someone suggested that for my fundraiser for my 10th anniversary being ordained, link in the description if you're watching this or listening to this online, that I should um, parachute jump. I think they were joking. I hope so. Anyway, I would do it if it was off a, a chair, perhaps, or even risk a, a table, but anything more than that, it's actually not a plane. I don't think so. Are you a risk taker? Abraham seems like a risk taker, doesn't he? Abraham 
take your wife and your your nephew and and your possessions leave everything else behind and go to the place i'm going to show you <laughs> what what place is that where are you leading me god why am i following you what are you going to do for me those are all questions that abram doesn't ask he just sort of well god's called me so i guess we're going then sarah lot pack up we're going somewhere and god's going to show us abram puts his faith in this call of god that god will show him that god will lead him that god will bring him to a good place he takes a risk believing that but it's not just the call of God that Abraham responds to with faith that Abraham takes a risk about God makes a promise to Abraham an absolutely astonishing incredible seemingly impossible for him to keep promise Abraham is promised that he and his wife both well beyond the age of childbearing will become the father and mother of a great nation later on in genesis god says that his descendants his descendants will be as many as the grains of sand on the shore and the stars in the sky if indeed you can count them and abraham it seems believes that promise now sometimes if you read the story you find his faith isn't so great he takes matters into his own hands often with disastrous effects at one point he falls about laughing and so does sarah and yet he takes the risk of believing that god will do what he says that this is meant for him and that god will make it true and you can almost hear the preacher at this point winding up for the great conclusion of his sermon abraham took the risk of faith abraham dared to believe in god's call and god's promise so will you today believe in god's call and god's promise on your life will you dare to do great things for god and you're sat there in the chair or the pew going me me them me you mean me you want me to do something incredible and great and brave like abraham because for me you know taking a risk is trying a different brand of coffee or having my steak medium rare instead of medium or going out without an umbrella or a coat or watching england play football and daring to believe that they might actually win in the knockout stage of a tournament oh wait that's actually happened but actually that preacher might have a point because faith is a risk that doesn't mean that we have to do something utterly life-changing so huge as what abraham did although if god calls us to do then that's what we're supposed to do but just believing in god that's a risk it seems to me especially in these days when cynicism and skepticism is so high daring to believe that jesus wasn't just a great teacher who taught us to love each other and who also did awesome things but that jesus was god in the flesh and that the crucified and risen jesus is lord of all and should command our first loyalty that's a huge risk to take and then to dare to believe that the risen lord is present in our lives through his holy spirit and that he can work in us and through us and that we are to follow him blimey that's an amazing risk perhaps the biggest risk anyone could take in their lives and as christians we have begun to take that risk not perfectly of course not who could do it perfectly even abraham didn't but we have become risk takers just by beginning to believe that you are a risk taker if you believe 
in this and in having that faith taking that risk we're copying people like abraham and we're copying some of the people we've heard about in the stories over the last couple of weeks we're copying jairus the synagogue leader daring to believe that jesus could heal his daughter when she was on the brink of death and daring to believe that there was hope in jesus even after the worst had happened we're copying the woman who came along in the middle of that story the woman with the internal bleeding that had been there for so long who dared to believe that she could touch Jesus's cloak and be healed even though it broke all the social conventions and rules about cleanliness in Jesus's day we're copying the disciples who are sent to the towns and villages of Galilee and who go even though they've just seen their master rejected in his hometown even though he has just warned them that they may well face rejection too they dare to believe that they can go and they dare to believe that Jesus has given them authority to drive out demons to heal and to share the good news that the kingdom of God is coming and to call people to repent even just that faith that God is real that Jesus is Lord and that we are called to follow him and share him however small our faith in that is is to be a risk taker and in doing so we're not just copying those people we're copying God as well I think God is a risk taker now at this point some of you may go <gasps> what how that, that's blasphemy how can you say that but just think about that reading from the beginning of John's gospel that Barry brought to us and in the midst of all this wonderful poetry and picturesque language in which John is trying to say something that is utterly unsayable in human words we find this that God in Jesus came among his own people but they didn't recognize him they didn't accept him God could have come at any time and in any situation and could have prepared the ground perfectly God could have used his power to change everyone's minds before his ca he came so that they would accept him and believe him straight away God could have done that but he didn't he went leaving people's hearts and minds exactly as they were he took the risk that people wouldn't recognize him in Jesus that they wouldn't see Jesus as the Messiah the anointed one of God because he wasn't doing the things that they expected the Messiah to come God took a risk when he came in Jesus and that risk seemed to have failed when Jesus was crucified and killed and yet we believe that that risk that even that action of allowing himself to be killed has brought salvation to us and to the world God is a risk taker I think and when we take that risk of faith of believing and following him we're copying him but I suppose the question might be on your mind well Stephen that that's all well and good but why are you talking about risk taking anyway what what's all this got to do with the price of milk where's all this come from in the first place well risk has been a huge part of this pandemic in all sorts of ways there's always that risk that whatever we do we might catch or spread covid and a lot of the decisions that have had to be taken have been about managing that risk to a greater or lesser extent and however well or badly you think the government has handled this crisis and I could tell you what I think but I won't they have been charged with trying to deal with that risk and assess how great or small it is and what they should allow us to do in response to that risk in order to keep people safe in order to stop the health service being overwhelmed and all the rest of it and again however well or badly you may think they've done that that's a huge job and this process that we're in now this announcement about what will happen on the 19th that's a huge risk 
especially with cases being so high um some people might say it's an unnecessary risk a risk we shouldn't be taking but actually opening up is always going to be a risk and we will have to take risks in part of that or at the very least we will have to weigh up risks you know the the risk of staying in still even though we don't have to and what that might mean for us the risk of should i wear a mask am i risking myself or others by not doing so should i take the risk of breaking two meter won't be a rule but breaking the two meter social distancing dare i do that there are all sorts of risks that we've had to weigh up that we've sometimes had to take that we've sometimes not taken there's another risk as well in this process of opening up and it's particularly i think for us as church and that risk is this it's not a risk for us to avoid it's a risk for us to take the risk that god might be calling us and leading us not just to the normal before the pandemic but into something new something different something that we don't yet know and that we can't plan and put into place right now this pandemic has changed so many things people have changed our communities have no doubt changed our country our world have changed in all sorts of ways and we have changed we are not we could not be the same people that we were before all this began and that means our churches can't be the same people and the same places that they were before all this began some of those changes we know we know for better or worse how different we are from before some of those i guess we'll find out further along the line as we head into whatever the world looks like post july the 19th so we can't in a way go back to exactly how things were yes there is huge comfort and and solace from that and i'm not saying that we must just forget everything that was before there's there's good in finding comfort and finding peace and hope in those things that we loved and valued before this began especially after all that we've been through but we can't just recreate what happened before we can't just imagine that this was just a temporary break and that we can press a reset button and it be as if it was the fourth sunday in march that we never had together this has to affect things it has to change things i don't say that as a sort of we must change things just as a matter of fact it has to have changed things and that means that the things that we do and the the type of people that we are and the way our church happens and what we do as church they will also change and that's not just because of restrictions that may or may not still be in place and actually that's not just a byproduct of the changes we have gone through i think god is calling us to be different god is calling us to be here not just for ourselves to find the comfort that actually we kind of long for but to be here for a world that's changed for a community that's changed for people who have changed both inside and outside the church whatever this newness might be and i wish i could give you a manifesto or a detailed plan of what it will be but i can't but whatever it looks like it's not just the byproduct of all that has happened it is god's i think deliberately calling us to find what we are to be now and some of that might mean doing new things that we're not so sure about doing things that might seem tricky for us taking a risk 
on something new. It might mean stopping doing some things, even some things that were important to us. It might mean that things don't happen that we assumed would happen and that would be helpful for us to happen. It might think, mean new things happen that we don't always have control over, but that we're sort of called to accept and to take on and to take in to our lives. Some of this we can plan for. Some of this we can begin to say, okay, this looks like what God is doing. Some of it, as I say, will only happen as we live in this new world almost that we're called to be part of. But all of it is the call of God, that call of God that came to Abraham and Sarai and all the rest of them to go with him. All of it is part of that risk of faith that we have already begun to take by putting our faith and trusting in Jesus. And all of this is copying the one in whom we put our faith copying the risk-taking of God in becoming human, in coming amongst people who would reject as well as accept him, and of him daring to entrust the message of his good news to people like you and me. So will we take that risk? Will we hold lightly to what has gone before? Not that they're not good things, but that they might not be the things that God wants for us, needs for us to have here and now. We're going to sing a song together that puts some of that in context in the words of Paul from the great letter of Philippians. All I once held dear, knowing you, Jesus, there is no greater thing. <laughs> Thank you. 
We come now to pray for other people and ourselves, to entrust them and us to God. So let us pray together. Now there are many prayers we could bring to God in this time that would be easy for us to say. Prayers for our friends and our family. Prayers for situations that we know well. Prayers for good things to happen for us, for other people in our worlds. And there's nothing wrong at all in praying for those things. But I wonder if, in the spirit of risk-taking, we might pray some more difficult prayers today. Maybe we could take a risk and pray for someone we don't get on with, or maybe someone who's hurt us or left us. Maybe we could pray for a situation that we don't know so well. Or maybe a situation that makes us uncomfortable. Maybe we could pray for something that we know won't be easy but which we know needs to happen. Maybe we could ask God to use us in some way even in a way that might be difficult or uncomfortable for us. Or maybe we could pray for someone whom we know to become a Christian and we could ask God how we can be part of that happening. And as we pray these trickier prayers, these riskier prayers, we do bring those other more easy to say prayers, those prayers that come more naturally to us, those prayers for the people we love. those prayers for the situations that we know about. Those prayers for ourselves. And Lord, as we bring all these prayers to you, we ask that in everything you would keep leading us, even when following you means going beyond what is safe, what is known, what is comfortable for us. Help us, because of what you've done for us in Jesus and through your Holy Spirit, to keep trusting in you, no matter what happens, no matter where you lead us. Amen.
To God be the glory, great things he has done. We close our worship in song together. And let's share the grace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for watching or listening to this service. Please take care, stay safe and God bless you. Bye bye.